Good evening, everyone. Welcome to this lecture about my my painful greatest losses ever. It's a bit hard to talk. Well, it's not that hard to talk about this concept. You always remember your worst losses. You know those moments that you just start hating chess. Like, ah, why do I play this game? I mean, I could just be out there. I don't know, have a beer, hang out with my friends. I don't know, watch TV. I'm with, what am I doing with this game? I mean, it's very humbling. You know, losing in chess is very humbling because. You can play soccer or in football. You can say this guy made a mistake, or the referee made a mistake, or the. But you know, in chess, it's all on you. It's all on you. It's very, very humbling. Okay, I thought, what, what should I choose? That people would believe that I am really talking about my, my uh, greatest losses. Actually, because it's been such a long time, as you can see, it came from two thousand and four. I really cannot express the the feeling. Besides, it was at the time that I was on the rise. My elo was going, growing, and it was a hiccup. But it was a very untimely hiccup in my in my rise to become a gym so i was so i entered school i was i didn't have any norms or something i, I was 23 50 feet day so in a year time i was an im and in a year time after less than a year time after i was a gm and uh i think i got very close to 24 60 70 strength by this time 28th of april 2004 but then uh, this was a this was a very untimely hiccup in my in my rise to on my way to becoming a GM. And I thought, okay, you know, you always have these issues in ch in chess, talking about that there is some sort of a sexism going on, and we do not respect ladies enough. And uh, I chose a game I lost against a lady. So Maria Volcheva, I don't know if she still plays chess. I haven't seen her in a tournament. I think after two thousand and six, I th I think I saw her playing uh, at the Olympiad in 2006 in Torino I'm not sure even about that but yeah but I I wish her the best anyways um, so this is round nine I had a great start in this tournament so I'm as you can see I'm 24 36 and that was my highest rating ever by far that was the f that was the second time in my life I was crossing 2400 and uh, and uh, I won against a 2580 GM, then I drew a 2600 with black, then I played a very good game against another GM I lost, then I started beating the lower rated players and losing to the higher rated ones, and uh, okay, I, I, was, I didn't have the chance to score a, a GM norm, so I was a bit despondent, but not much, and I was still on a kind of an even score. So if, had I won this game, my ELO would have gone up actually maybe a couple of points or something. I was still about the, I mean, if I went, maybe two, three, I don't know. Anyways, so I was not underperforming for my ELO. Uh, but I was like, okay, I'm going to show up and I am on a rise. And this person has passed her prime. She was like, I don't know, 70, 80 points below her pass, below her uh, best ELO ever. So I was like, okay, this is just, I'm showing up and I'm winning this game. That was a very wrong, that's a very wrong mentality in general. You show up and I, no, I'm not. Not that because she's a woman or something. No, no, no. That, that wasn't it. It's a 2280. I am playing with GMs all, all, all day long. I'm going to beat these players. And this overconfidence can always cost you something. And I learned it the hard way. Let's see. Uh, so if you play e4, c5, knight f3, e6, d4 takes, takes, and a6. I used to play this uh, Paulson count system back at the time, and uh, it was a a quote quote hot opening at the time it was considered a, nowadays after c4 it's, it's a suffering really there's so many uh, well i mean they, it's a still a playable opening but i i'm not having fun if if, if i were to choose a, a line in sicilian to play as black that wouldn't be my first choice so she she went for c4 knight f6 knight c3 and i'm playing for a win right i'm not gonna play bishop d6 bishop e7 queen c7 and play the hedgehog no no sir I'm going to play for a win. Go bishop b4. Oh, sorry, queen c7. I am preparing uh, the move bishop b4. Now, now this they play a3. This move a3 to prevent bishop b4. Bishop b4. And this, back at the time, it was considered playable. This this line with this queen e5. But uh, current analysis shows that here, I don't know exactly what's the, what. I don't remember what's white's best move here. I think maybe bishop b3. White's lead in development outweighs the extra pawn for black. So it's not a recommend 
recommended with the line. So after this a3, the, these days, they play the move b6, and they still enter the hedgehog with the move a3 for, for, uh, for white. Any questions about that? Make sense? Are we good? All right. Any questions from our audience so far? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. So queen c7, okay, my opponent played bishop e3, and I was like, okay, this doesn't sound right. This doesn't sound right. So I played the move uh, bishop b4. I was like, okay, now you give me the moment. Uh, unbeknownst to me that she's actually prepared this line. So she played the move queen b3, and I was like, no, can't be right. That's an extra pawn in the center. Uh, well, first of all, is the queen good on b3? What do you think? Is it a, is it a good play? Is it a well-placed piece on b3? That's the first question we have to answer. Let me give everyone a couple of minutes to think about this position first. What's that? That you must do very well for this. What is good in queen b3? Well, I mean, it wins the tempo, but the question is where it goes after, right? Mm -hmm. It's on the way, because where does white has extra space? On the king side or on the queen side? On which side do you have extra space as white? From white side? It's on the queen side, right? Because of the pawn on c4, is that right? Yeah. And all the weaknesses on b6 or like this is square or... Right, you can maybe address it, huh? Mm -hmm. And maybe if you can expand b4, c5, that would be a nice square to exploit, right? Of, of course, black wouldn't just stand and watch, uh, but... I mean, and also this, this bishop kind of eyeballing this, right? Makes sense? So the queen is not so well placed. So even if you play bishop c5, practically speaking, this is still a fight. I mean, uh, there, I just found a game from 2018. I'm not sure if it's a rapid game or a, or a classical, but it's a game between uh, Gawain Jones, who, the grandmaster who, who today just crossed 2700 for the first time in his career. Congratulations to him. Uh, against the uh, Grandmaster Normandus Mises from Latvia. And Mises, okay, uh, uh, Gawain heavily out, uh, outrate uh, Mises at this moment, but even even he got this, it, it's, it's a still a fight. I mean, he, he got a very strong attack, but the game ended in a draw in a very, I mean, okay, I'm not sure if, if uh, Mises played the best fashion, but I mean, he kind of, he kind of tried so, and and he managed to hold actually. I don't intend to analyze this, but again, even if you're not sure, just drop the bishop back, play d6, just stay slightly worse, play on the game, right? I mean, your black is still in the game after bishop c5, right? Are we good? So my opponent played queen b3. I even didn't take any time. Well, it took some time maybe. I'm not sure. I wish I, I kept the score sheet, but. I mean, you don't think about it at that time, huh? So I played the move bishop takes c3. I said, okay, extra pawn in the center, huh? Who wouldn't take it? I took with the queen. He took with the queen. I took knight e4, and I, and I left the uh, tournament hall. So I'm just doing good. And I was waiting because usually about half an hour into an hour, it was played in Dubai. In Dubai, they have this praying, uh, prayer time uh, break because, they, because, you know, the the uh, Muslim players had to go and say prayers in the mosque. I was like, okay, uh, I, I'll wait for that. But my opponent, but when I was walking back, I expected my opponent spending some time at this moment. When I, when I was walking back, my opponent already had made her move. Can you guess what did she play? Okay, keep looking, keep looking. Any any comments from our live audience? Why why would they why would white do in this position? Give everyone three minutes. Okay, which one? Queen a three. I just got d six. Okay, any comment then? No one? Not for this one? All right, knight b5. 
Well, the point is the knight e6, I take with the d pawn, queen g7, rook f8, and then I go knight d7, defending my rook on f8. So the thing is, after takes takes, now, now after f3, she's preparing to play the move bishop to h6. But if, if you take on e6, um, I'm not sure, but I can take, take, and I think I first of all I can have to check, which is which is kind of not fun to meet. And then after this, this uh, suppose this move, I just simply play ninety seven. Right, the rook is defended, and I'm just up a piece. So, knight b five. And that came as a shock. So I did not make a move until it was the uh, the prayer's uh, break. Now I, I spent a lot of I was like... So, but you know, now I have experienced enough. When they play a move like this, what, do I ha what can I do except taking it, right? Take that one and then think and move after, not at this moment. So I took on b5, queen takes g7. The next move is also forced. I have to move the rook, right? Here and then my opponent played f3. Well, back at the time, and the later uh, later material materials published in uh, in in chess journals back in the time, this was considered better for white. But I was analyzing it today after such a long time, and I realized it's not that bad actually. What would you do here as black? The question is that what's the best move for black? Because because well is is that a, is that the only thing? Because we gave up uh, right now is just an extra piece, right? Mm -hmm. If you give it back, is it that bad? Because you know white white king is also vulnerable now. The question is that are you that that much worse if you give up the piece back or not? Because I approached it with the same question: Do I? Can I keep the piece? Because, well, I was only thinking about winning the game, of course, which is a still, a, still a wrong mindset. What is the best move in this position for black? Any move plan? Uh, no? Queen a5, king e2. D5, yeah, D5 yeah. F takes E4. Uh, bishop H6. Or Bishop C5. Then I go Bishop C5 and we lose immediately. It's very hard, but I, I had to uh, deal with it over the board. The clock is ticking and the, and the prayer's time is over. So I tried to use that extra time to think about this position. I couldn't come up with anything. And actually, that extra 10 minutes, that, that 10 minutes break, actually exasperated the situation for me because I got more nervous. Because when you have even time and to think about it, you start seeing ghosts. So I even was seeing things that they were not on the board. But I was thinking, oh my God, my position is really bad. And I, but the thing is that I was still not changing my mindset. I was not trying to equalize or get a fighting position. I was just trying to win. That's straight by maintaining my peace on the board. We're getting somewhere. The final, okay, queen a5 check is, and that c5 is a, is a big mistake, it's a big blunder. Which, yeah, queen a5 check, king e2, but then this is the hard move, knight f6. <laughs> takes and b takes c4, you give up the exchange back, you go d5, knight d7, and it's, 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 it's balanced. Uh, beautiful computer move. takes and take on c4. You just give up an exchange and then... It's not bad at all. It's a, it's computer close, uh, stays close to zero. Uh, of, course, uh, of course, I have to, I have to, I have to analyze it um, uh, more in detail, but this was a... But uh, you know, if you, if you think in a proper way, you just think about, okay, I'm giving back and then after that I'm up a pawn. Okay, I, that, that, that dark square bishop is a killer. But 
you can always give up an exchange and then your pawns become very strong in the center and white also is not that well developed anymore because that king blocks the bishop the rook is stuck on h1 the, the rook on the eight is already developed right the rook on the eight doesn't need to move right it, it's attacking on an a2 pawn so i need just to move the d pawn and put the knight on d7 right if i get to do this i'm fine is, are, can we agree on that huh Bishop c5, d6, and then you put the knight d7. d6, knight d7. Yeah, bishop, no, bishop c5, you go d6. Or maybe I can just play knight d7 and take, and then b takes c4. I don't know. Can I do this? Now the king is exposed, kind of. Quite interesting, quite interesting. Yep. So, <coughs> the game, okay, I played this move, knight c5, my opponent played bishop h6. I thought I thought this is the way, takes, and then, well, th the thing is that I did not think about this move at all. I was thinking only by rook to d1. Mm -hmm. What's so good about this move is that in some lines I was calculating after rook d1, the queen goes to e7, I have the move knight c6, but now, she maintains the threat, but I cannot play knight c6 anymore. So uh, here I play knight b3. Why I put b6 here? I don't know why I put this one line. It's not how the game went, actually. Oh, wait. Excuse me just a second. Oh, somebody else. Oh, this is somebody else's game, actually. Somebody else. In 2016, they reached the same position. And then after this one, yeah. The thing is that, as you can see, these three pieces are out. Then white simply plays bishop b2 castle, and uh, just black is doomed because the queen is stuck to the rook on f f8. They're, actually, I have to include this one too. So black is completely, you see? It's like if, if the pawns and the rook have cut black's pieces into two halves. So, at least mine created more chances, as you can see. It's still getting dramatic. Hold, hang in there. It's getting dramatic. Okay, the the move. He, oh, okay. Actually, this is the winning move. Actually, okay. He missed this. Actually, she, I meant exclamation. Okay. She first of all, she missed the simple win. Queen c three. That's wins on a spot. Yeah, I have to go back before the game over. It's a bad move, but in the last position, you have to make a move that gives you the most amount of chance, and that was the the practical way. So rook d one. I put it back on training. I don't want you to see the answers. Queen before check, uh, king f2, rook takes a, a2, and she's pretty very enter enterprising. Bishop c4. Now, you know, the thing is that as, as, the, as the engine analyzes the position, it goes from 0 0.5, point, uh, plus 1, then goes down, then it's just very hard to say. But uh, what I can say, it's more comfortable to play as white still. still. Now here I had to go rook takes b2. I had to play rook takes b2. I played the move that's not so great, f6. And actually, I forgot to I think men mention what, what's the best move here. I think this is still OK. Oh, no, I think this is not the best move. f6 was wrong for some reason. And I forgot to include that. Do you mind if I run the en engine to ch check if the, what's the best move here? Because I don't remember. This, this was a bad move. Because rook b2 was forced. Let's see, let's see. I'm not, I don't, I'm not sure if I remember. Bishop takes e6 is possible, no? Is, well, I take. No, bishop e6 is not, uh, doesn't work. Actually, she took it later, and that, that doesn't work. That's, king g3 prepares the move, which it still doesn't work. Because, uh, because bishop e6, d6, queen c7, the, uh, queen c5 check. I have that move. Bishop e6, I take. I mean, you can take twice on f8. I cannot take it back, but I, I have enough material. I can take on b2, knight d7. I'm back in the game. But uh, queen c7 was her plan, but then I have this check. doesn't work. Let me just check. I, I mean, this was not a, at least uh, 15 years ago, I thought this is not a good move. Let me see. Okay. Of course, rook b, okay, this depth thick. doesn't make any sense. But there's a, there's a move here, rook b and depth 20. 
but okay good luck finding that I mean let me, let me stop this thing it's, it's kind of slow I think any Houdini or something is fine I need some something that is fast enough yeah okay yeah good luck finding that <laughs> but anyways this was this was not the greatest move anyways so this f6 and, and she played king g3 which is not a great move let me turn it off <coughs> so king g3 i take on b2 now it's really getting dramatic and i'm really low on time i have less than five minutes and it's move 18 and i have to make 22 moves so i i'm really low on time so but she, she also doesn't have so much time i think she has like 10 minutes or something so she takes on e6 and i'm like what what i mean i got here no maybe yes so d takes e6 i played this one fast there i played this check first so look, look at this i'm up two pieces this i played this check i, I saved the rook here uh, it's move 21 I, and at, at, at the time there was you would get 30 seconds for each move so i played this move queen seven fast too so i was back to about five minutes I, i've made three moves and i'm winning now it's completely winning it's a piece up right it's a well i mean i'm losing the, uh, the bishop but it, I, it's it's a, it's a simple piece up position now so my opponent plays queen takes c8 check king here and plays back queen c3 it's a, it's her best practical chance actually but it's totally winning right it's up a piece position now why to pl now uh why to play no it's no oh sorry uh yeah black to play sorry yes yes black to play oh, my bad and i was like now nah. again then i got so relaxed i was tense and i started making good moves for a few moves okay you're kind of more or less forced and then i was like relaxed okay i have five minutes uh, i was no nodding to my i don't know my friend or my mom i don't know who was there just get me some coffee and it's like i'm so so much in charge and that was again i, I got too comfortable here which one that and then if i take the knight yeah i missed that i played rook gg2 and now after this unbelievable i have to find only ways to make a draw well the thing is i said okay why would i give up my knight on b3 right i just would say okay i, I and what bothers me now and that's what makes it painful i saw rook b takes g2 because the thing is that even if you don't do that even if you play rook takes b takes g2 queen takes b3 even if i even if i don't see queen c5 i'm up a pawn in a winning position i just can't play knight d7 it's i mean why it's gonna get mated pretty soon knight d7 knight d5 right <laughs> and then f5 and everything everything's coming like it's just a it's just a matter of time to win this position and then i played rook, rook g, g takes g2 and, and now i have to find the only move to make a draw unbelievable and what i didn't see now i'll tell i'll show you what, what, I, what i didn't see i played e5 but the, the draw is rook bc2 and after the queen takes b3 i think this is bad so after queen takes to, to d3 attacking h7 i go queen c5 and after check it's perpetual king e8 queen h8 check king h here and you have you have to do perpetual it's going to be a draw so that was the only move rook bc2 was the only move so here i confidently played e5 my opponent took and i was like i'm winning i play queen six check and i take the rook next move he played she played rook g4 <laughs> i didn't see rook g4 and i resigned that definitely it came as a shock the move rook g4 just came as a shock to me i even did, you know actually i at least could take on g2 here Queen takes b3, king b3 takes take on h6. I'm down on exchange, most likely losing, but I can make a few more moves. And it's in time pressure, something can happen, right? I thought I saw a win. This king moves, the rook knight is defended. I take the rook. I win. And then she played this move. 
The funny thing is that she can't even play king g3. I didn't even see that one. Yeah, well, that's the sun learned. I completely had a focus issue in this, in this entire game. Whenever you go to a game, you have to make it so important to you that you only think about it. Only think about the game. Okay, the first painful, pain, painful loss. <coughs> well, but she, she had a good prep and she came up with interesting ideas. Bishop c4, all the cb5. So I think at the end of the day, she deserved to win. Any questions, Ben? Uh, yeah, but I think it has been answered. But uh, one of the chatters asked, "What would happen if Rook takes Rook? Doesn't that still also drop?" In which moment? Probably here. Rook takes G two. No, Rook. Rook. I uh, play Rook B C two here. Yeah. Ah, you mean Rook takes Rook? Rook takes Rook. What I take here? The problem is that ah, oh, you want to go Queen C five here now, but then I have a check here. I I I think it's. It's quite it's questionable if if I can save save this because if I play this I think there's this check and then uh, if I take check then it's a queen h5 maybe but then what if I take here well, yeah but then can't I just keep pick up material yeah I'm not sure I think I think G1 is, is losing that's why actually that's why I thought when I took on G2 I, I thought of E5 I think G1 is already this check and the rook is hanging this double threat so Queen B3 I mean what about this I mean I don't know Yeah, this is losing. No, no, queen b3 doesn't work. Anyways, anyways, yeah, that was painful. So next one happened somewhere after this one. This was another hiccup who, which prevented me uh, to kind of improve and get um, get closer to the GM title. So the funny thing is that before the game, they told me this guy gets a lot, uh, gets his points, the upsets by getting lucky against the stronger players. And that kind of got on, uh, under my skin. A lot of time, I was not. I was trying to make the safe choices, and that's where I ended up blundering. Let's, this is an interesting story. I was already, uh, I'd say, psychologically, I was kind of a little undermined. I was like, this guy. Okay, let me show you the game first. So where's the next button here? <coughs> Any questions? So, oh, wait, wait a second. Okay, this is, oh, this is not saved correctly. Oh, no, no, it's not the game. Ah, uh, this one. So, yeah, yes, we're, we became friends after that, actually, in uh, future tournaments. So, I, I still play my opening, so that's good. Do not lose confidence, still play your openings. Don't lose confidence. This is, uh, how many months after? Four months after, more or less. So, so he, he went for this knight c3. He wanted to play the, this this and c4 were, but knight c3 was more common at the time than uh, c4. Now c4 I think is more common. At least I see it more often in the uh, GM level games. Bishop e3, I play bishop e3. I think this is already not a, not a, not a right move. I have, to, I have to check my old notes, but this is already not a good move. I, was, I used to play this move with the idea of after castle, I play this move knight c6 early on. And then if they, if they capture, I can. So I really like to, the idea of neutralizing this knight on d4 with knight c6. And then after, after I take the attack with the bishop, I would like to go knight e7, knight c6 to attack this bishop on d4. So that's what, but I think this is not exactly correct. So I have to go this move. I think this is the best move nowadays. Although Grishik has many nice wins in this position as from white side. Anyways, this castle, I played queen c7. After 2005, when I became a GM, I started playing the move knight c6. This move, I think if you just go a4, knight a2, c3, uh, black is already in some trouble. This is not the best setup. I, can't, I cannot afford making all these moves on the queen side without developing the king side. So I think this is 
already suspicious again. F4. But again, this is not the right approach. This is what you want to see in this opening from black side. You go aggressive against the king side. But the thing is that when you go too aggressive, these pieces on g8 and f8, uh, this, the knight on g8 and the bishop on f8 are actually well placed. They're ready to, to react, actually. Because if you go f5, I go e5, I come knight f6 right away after. I can play bishop c5 or bishop b4. Or if you, even if you go f5, I can play bishop d6, put the bishop on e5, which controls a lot of squares, right? Like if this happens, then you can do this. And you can use this as square. So kind of, I, I, I am ready actually to react to this uh, position. So I play bishop c5 first. Bishop b3, I play knight c6, my favorite move. He goes knight e2, so far so good. No tactics, right? I mean, moves like this. If the king is on h1, you can, but no tactics right now because this is hanging. Knight f6, I expected the move king h1, but he played this move, e5. Doesn't make any sense, right? Knight g4, and he played queen d2. Now what do we do here? Any questions? It's 22 seconds away. All right. We'll wait 22 seconds until. Knight knight, knight knight c takes e5 any any other any play anyone said knight c takes e5 nobody said that yes f takes e5 uh i just just take the queen mate and the bishop and if bishop f4 runs into this one game over so well at least he had to try something he he played the move rook a e1 then i was like thank you and thank you, I got both bishops. Knights are crippled when the, it comes to attacking. So I was like, okay, I'm, I'm set. Castle and I'm set, done. Central pawn up two bishops and no attack. Now, here he played uh, rook king h1. Now, if you want to finish this game, you know, the, the winning move, uh, I had this, we had this wise man when I was, when I was back in Iran, that uh, he would come to tournaments. He was Iran's champion a long time ago, but he was a PhD, he was a, uh, philosopher as well very nice interesting guy unfortunately he passed away uh, he, he passed away too early uh, he was saying the winning move is not the one it's not the best move is the one that makes your opponent resign so what will make my opponent resign in this position Central pawn up, two bishops, open position, screwed up on the structure for. Two two moves would make your opponent resign very early in this game. Two kind of moves. Somebody almost whispered it. That was right. Yeah, that's one of the moves. Just kill the counterplay. Queen b6, rook c8, bishop d5. Trade everything on the c file, and you're winning. There's another one. There's another plan too. As a slow and as possible, as a slow and easy. You know, this game has such an impact on me. Let me tell you some background. Back. Uh, background story about this one so i i was late for a tournament so they paired me against the countryman of mine who was also back at the time late for a tournament so we agreed on a draw without playing which is kind of weird but that's there's no other way we were we were on our way our flight got delayed five times five times so we just arrived before almost uh, first round was halfway through so we Call it a draw. Then we then I won a game, and then in the third round, I played uh, I played against uh, Grandmaster Minasian from uh, from Armenia, and I lost a horrible game from Whiteside. Like 
absolutely horrible. So I was thinking I have to win this one and I come back to the tournament. And, I, and I'm like playing, I've already thought for like, I don't know, 15 minutes, 20 minutes in the game and, uh, and I'm winning. Move 16, I'm winning. This is like game over. Doesn't matter who is your opponent. Even against Magnus Carlsen, this is very, very, very winning this position. No counter for nothing. So I was like, I just want to wrap this one up and go home. Wrong attitude again. Wrong attitude. There's a, the only thing that matters is to win the game. So you have to make a move, gradually just improve your position. The second way, any, any idea before I explain it? The second idea. You, well, queen d5 also, you don't really need that because the rook goes to f2. The queen on d5 can, it's good, it's good, the queen on d5. The queen on d5 is good, but then you can go f6, e5, rook a, e8, rook a, e8, f6, e5. e5? Yeah, not uh, right away. You go queen d6, queen d5, or just queen d6, rook a, e8, f6, e5. Done. Done. Easy, right? Piece of cake. What I did, queen, okay, still winning, still plus four f5 all right i made a right move this now i played another right move he played this now just take on e5 and play f6 right dismiss the uh queen back to e3 and then like now queen d6 right and queen d5 game over right and if the rook goes to g1 black is white is totally tied down then you go king f7 or rook e8 you bring the rook also to the game black white is absolutely out of move Absolutely. Any questions, Ben, so far? Nothing? Okay. So I play queen d8. Okay, no big deal. It's still, it's plus three. Knight g3. Okay, that knight is... Now, you have a game like this, and you, you're not feeling confident, just gr trade everything you can. What's that? d6, yeah. Queen f4. Now it starts getting a little bit. So I see this knight. So the, the easiest way is to play rook here. Queen a5, rook f1, take the pawn. Right there, and king gets shaved. Because your rook defends it, and then you're up two pawns. The queen comes back to d5. No threat, really. Knight g7, knight, queen takes b2. Now I'm mating my opponent. Right? So queen a5, pick up the second pawn. The position is open. You always can sac exchange one of the bishops. There's not enough material to checkmate you, right? As long as you stay what? Active. I wasn't active. So I played the move g6, which is fine. And here, okay, here's the story. I have over an hour, my opponent is, has less than five minutes. And then here I was just like, dude, I just want to go home. I'm winning. And in desperation, he played the move knight df5. Very good, very good practical decision. He's losing anyways, right? So we take it, right? Then he played d4. Now, it's, it's a judgment question. Where do you put the bishop? Bishop before, okay. Any answers, Ben? No, that's not a problem. I just go. I I mean, yeah, that's uh, that can be a problem, yeah. You, now you need to calculate. Now you need to calculate, actually. You need to be very, very accurate in your move order. You cannot just play by feelings here. And that was another mistake I made here. I just felt like anything should be winning. I just need to win a tempo. Uh, it's bishop b6 to, to take the pawn. And here I calculated, but just for, for a couple of minutes. I was fast. I was doing tactics every day. I was 
in a good shape at the time. So I just saw small uh, continuation and I was like, I'm winning. So I played this, I played bishop e4, which blew away the win. He played, he played knight h5, which is actually more accurate than queen h6. And now my only move to keep me in the game is the move bishop to d2. After takes, queen h4. I'm actually slightly better still. But when your mindset is that I'm winning, you're not looking. So I had calculated this line, and that's why with the bishop on b6, it makes sense. Another painful part is that I told myself it doesn't matter. I saw bishop b6 is winning. That's why I, I, I choose this game, because I think, in my opinion, the painful losses are not just the ones that are like, you lose money, life changer. I mean, some, some of them are life changer. You're just, oh, I'm done with the game. You become so fed up and everything. But the, the biggest pain still, in my opinion, is the one that, oh, you see it. This is winning. And then you play something else. What's that? Rook what? No, no. I play king h8, which is a blunder. Queen h6. Rook g8. And rook e8. And the thing is, if the bishop is on b6, I mate. I take on g2, check, take on d4, mate. And the thing, no, no, I saw this. I took on g2, check, he played this, I resigned. Because I didn't see bishop c6, check, he goes queen g7, mate. I didn't see this with my calculation. I forgot about this. I, I didn't see, I thought I'd give a check, I take the rook and I'm winning. That's why I said it doesn't matter where I put the bishop. I, I fraud. I, when I think about it, I still have to get a goosebump. Because I saw bishop b6 is winning, and then I said it doesn't matter where I put the bishop. I don't know why even you become complacent. You see a win, clear win, and I play that move. It, this one can be painful, right? Especially, I, I almost played bishop c6. That could have appeared on the board, actually, with queen g7. Well, the tournament went really down the drain. It was, it was really a bad tournament. Just, I was going to lose a bunch of ELO points. Just, I got lucky last round. I got paired against someone, my own rating, and in a in down the pawn position, he blundered. But it wasn't as winning for him as this one, so so it wasn't uh, as bad. So I got to some time. Ben, any questions? Any anyone from the audience? Okay. Made you like how it ended, though. What's that? Appreciated the ending. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I, I do too. I do too. I have to admit, it's it's very beautiful, no? I mean, I I'm I am in the process of coming up with an idea for for a book and. In, in, one, in one of the chapters, I want to talk about how to learn best from your losses. And this will definitely will make it to that book. Any tactic book, anything. This is a very beautiful position. I mean, think about it. White, black has a discovered check. Two bishops on the board. But it's getting mated. Any questions from, <coughs> from everyone here? So, I, I could come up with something else, but not, not, they wouldn't be as enter, enterprising as these two games I, I, I just had shown you. So, instead of bore you, I thought I, I'll pick up something from recent games played in, in the Shampir tournament between Topalov and, well, I cannot say how painful it could be for Topalov, of course. He can talk for himself. But I just want to talk about the suffering. So, and let's learn some endgame too. This one is very interesting. Uh, I, I explained it in, a, in the Puzzle, Puzzle Paradise on Sunday, and it, it almost took the entire class. Uh, entire class. So, I am not sure if you will have time, but I first want to show you that the problem, oh, no, this is not the first position I want to show you, so this is the one. So our biggest enemy when we lose obvious games, in, in a sense, is complacence. I'm not saying Tupala was complacent because 58 games, move, uh, 58 moves, uh, game number eight, uh, he is not as professional as he used to be. So anything, and, and you're playing Ding Liren, so it's intimidating. But this is obvious draw, right? 
white is down an h pawn so if you get the h pawn give up the e pawn that h pawn is more advanced you can you can get your king back and and maintain the filidor position right it doesn't take so much so why would topalov play king f5 why wouldn't you play king f3 right isn't that right hmm I go with my king to win the pawn, right? King f6, king g4, rook a3, take, rook a3, yeah, I mean rook f8 check, then take king, h, king g4, and then you just try to trade the rooks on f3 and put the king on g2. So that, would, that should be a draw. <coughs> Anyways, he plays king f5. Now it makes his life a little bit difficult. Now, in this moment, he can go rook b8, and it's gonna be a draw. h2. I mean, king h6, rook h, rook h1, rook h2, take on e5, king g5. Your e pawn goes fast as well, and you sack the rook for the h pawn. It's going to be a draw. Make sense? So then he wastes another tempo. Now, and now here, the Englishman finds this. King h6 is still a draw if you go rook b7. He goes rook e8, and now, and now the Englishman plays rook a7. Now life gets uncomfortable. Aha! Uh -huh. Now you're going to have problem when something very easy turns into something as a problem is this is still a draw then you start to suffer and it is psychologically extremely extremely difficult to handle so rook h8 doesn't work rook h7 right the, and and that's because of the king f5 because now the king is far from the h pawn he cannot afford that so you have to use a rook to get back so he goes rook, rook b8 right got the rook got to get in front of h2 rook b6 check it's forced actually because if you go um why the check is forced i don't remember rook b1 was not a good move ah rook b1 i think rook g7 rook h1 rook g ah okay rook g1 i think rook g5 check rook h5 yes i think this because i'm threatening rook g1 now rook h1 Rook g5 check, and then I go rook, rook h5. Everything is under control. That h5 score is important. So he found this good move. So, you know, it's, it's Topalov, one of the best players in the chess history. And if you want to name 25 players <coughs> in terms of strength, definitely Topalov is one of them in the entire history of chess. So um, h2, he finds this check because the square h5 should be filled with a piece, which is the rook, which is the king now. King h5. Rook b1, king h4, he, he goes e4. Now, these guys, move 64, playing six hours so far. Lucky machine plays rook e7. Rook a1, you have to wait. King f6 doesn't work. You get yourself you get yourself away from the e pawn, so you, you have to just stay. They make a few, uh, few moves, and then he starts giving the side check. Okay, now I cannot make any progress. But it's still very annoying, right? Still very annoying. He goes rook h8, takes rook king g3, rook h1, king g2, takes. Okay, this is a draw. If you put table bus, it says a draw. But, again, let's look at this. Ding Lira finds a way to force white to promote to the knight. That was a draw. King f3, take the pawn, put the rook on f3, is a draw. Now, play another 15 moves. The game could end on move maybe 65 with a simple draw and now another 15 moves 130 moves so and they keep on playing let me just say i will not be able to complete this but i just give you uh some idea i might follow this actually on thursday on thursday uh lectures if you come back i i'll, I'll make sure that i'll cover in one of the lectures g5 they're playing uh, still doing good until they get to this position so so far he's defending just just fine he goes rook f3 and here here is where, where, where the tragedy happens one of the knight knight has two scores to go knight d6 loses to rook d3 knight f7 king f6 and it's a rook one knight d6 rook d3 knight f7 king f6 and it's a rook one so either knight g7 or knight c7 
Now G7 is what he was doing against the rook on f1, which it, which it works. But it does not work against the rook on f3. <laughs> it's very illogical, but that's the fact. Then drawing move is, let me close this. I can't explain it to you. I wish I had the amount of time, but the thing is that this is losing. Knight c7 is the, is the drawing move. Knight g7 loses. And the remaining move is king f6. Because nothing else can improve the position. King f6. Now, white has, uh, okay, uh, the, 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 the least, uh, the, the, the idea is that, what I, what I understood, is that you try to confine the knight on g7, put the king on e7, and get your rook to the fifth rank, and then the knight is, is stalemated. That's the plan. The king on e7, the rook on e5 or g5, and the knight on g7 is stalemated. So, goes king f6, suppose I go knight e8 check. If you learn to win this one, the rest are just trying to transpose the position into this. That's a lot, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. I'll just spend a few minutes explaining this one, and then I'll leave the entire thing to another full lecture. Maybe it, it takes at least, it took 50 minutes on Sunday to go over it with everyone. And still nobody excelled at it. I, I, cannot, believe, I cannot say I know everything about this position. And I've spent at least four or five hours working on this. So, Rook h3, and this is the key. Everybody is thinking that the move should be rook g3, rook g1, something like that, right? Yeah, rook g3 is a draw. King h7, king f7, knight f5, uh, sorry, knight h5, king h6, and then I, then I just, everything flips 90 degree. Not flips, it rotates 90 degree, sorry. So rook h3, I am just, <coughs> I am working on confining the, uh, <coughs> The knight, knight f5 check, king here, knight there, rook d3, I'm pushing the knight back. Knight e8, sorry, knight f7 loses immediately. Knight e8 check is the move, knight f7 loses to rook d4. <laughs> and now rook d7. If uh, knight e8, oh, wait a second, knight e8, I go, that, it, it, this one transposes to what? No, this is not this. Okay, I, I think I, made, I put the wrong continuation. No, no, knight e8 is losing because... Let me check, sorry. I think I, I, I just put the wrong move here. It must be rook, rook e3. No, rook d3, e, knight... E3. No, no, e3 is not... No, this is right. This... Oh, oh, I, now I remember. No, no. Now I told you, rook comes to the fifth rank. I forgot. And now the rook stops it the rook on f3 doesn't work because it cannot go to f5 now the rook now the rook stops it okay now i remember okay so get the king to e7 to simplify the formula is to get the king on e7 rook on the fifth rank and that's winning now for example king h7 uh king f7 right Good question. I think I messed up. Let me see. Ah, oh, well, but I can go here. Because this, what's that? Hmm, no, I cannot give you. No, no, I, I should not. I should not give you that. You're right. <coughs> hmm? What about King F8? King F8. <laughs> yeah, King F8. Because King H, King H6. Then I have this check. Yeah. And the, oh, but then, but then you can go here. <laughs> but, then but then I go rook down, rook yeah, down, rook I think. Down 
Yeah, this this uh, is the rook to yes because if you if you if you if you get your knight away from the king, then then it's it's over. No knight goes to h seven. No, but then rook to eight mate. If you go knight g five. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> we, found, we finally found it. And you see there's a lot of tricks here. And, and the entire thing is that this is the winning position. The entire idea is that this is the winning position. You want to get to this position, rook to layer page 3. Every other position transposes to this one. What is the difference between the first and third rank? They said that versus rook f1 it was worse. If the second rank, when you go rook d3, rook, d1, uh, rook d2, there's not... So you play rook h3, check here. Now, they go ninety six. You go rook d three. If the rook is on h two, if rook, rook d three is ninety four. Ah, check. Okay. If it's on one, if it's on one, if it's on one, the the knight comes to e four and goes to g three. Something something with that. Ninety four. Check and ninety three. Because knight e four. Check. The thing is that in this line, if knight goes to e four. Check. You go king f5, there's no knight g3 check. But when the rook is on d1, there's knight g3 check. Yeah, I think that was the reason. So the rook should be on d3, avoiding the knight e4 check and avoiding the knight g3 check. So from g3, knight can come back. Because you, you go to, uh, yeah, if you go g6, I go king f1, yeah. From that was, the, that was the only... You don't lose your chance because you can maneuver back to get it. It's still winning, but you have to. You don't make any improvement. That's the point. You don't make any improvement. The rook should be on the third rank. I will. I will thoroughly, as you can see, I have spent hours on all of this, and I still cannot remember everything. Right? I will uh, cover this spin. When can we do this? Co cover this end game in one of the classes, maybe. Yeah, uh, either Thursday. Do we do? Do we record on Sunday too, or no? Uh, that's Isaac, but it's not live. It's not live. Okay. Well, I th we try to have it s some cover someday. And thoroughly, we investigate this. Yeah, it's a lot of work. But anyways, thank you for joining me today, tonight. We learned something very fun together. I think this is the fun part. But I had to <coughs> respect the uh, title and talk about my losses first. But this is quite something. Well, thank you. Thank you.